Hey nurse family, today we're gonna to talk about your IM injection. Okay, and we're gonna kinda of try to filter in some of the different topics and things that I covered in my last video, um, which was choosing the appropriate needle size and syringe. So stick around, this will be very helpful to you. Kick. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so now when we consider an intramuscular injection, of course it's gonna depend on the age demographic. Specifically for infants and children, infants we usually use the vastus lateralis muscle to administer intramuscular injections. So most commonly babies receive vaccines when they're um, newborn as early as you know the day they're born, the hepatitis B vaccine, okay? And so, that is usually given in the vastus lateralis muscle. It's a larger muscle group. Their deltoids are not developed yet. And so the vastus lateralis is the preferred site for infants, okay? When we think about children, um, the deltoid is now more developed and can actually withstand the medication, okay? And again, the needle size is gonna be five eighths of an inch to one and one fourth inch. Now, when we talk about adults, most commonly the easiest site to access is the deltoid, right? It's very easy to have someone lift up their shirt. You know, um, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more comfortable. It's commonly used. However, remember we talked about the volume and the type of medication. Some medications are not appropriate to administer into the deltoid and anything above two milliliters should be administered in a larger muscle group, okay? So typically now the ventral gluteal is another preferred site for adults. Now, when we talk about the deltoid, we can go anywhere from one to one and a half inch in length. And when we talk about the ventral gluteal, we're looking at a one and a half inch needle because that is a larger muscle. So I currently have an order for my patient. Um, my patient's name is Jason C.T. Lee, and I have an order for morphine, two milligrams, I am Q2 hours PRN. This vial that I have on hand says morphine 10 milligrams per milliliter, meaning that for every milliliter, there is 10 milligrams of morphine in it. Now, oftentimes my students don't really understand that basically what, the, what that means is that when I'm choosing my syringe, I need to consider the fact that 10 milligrams are in one milliliter. So if I wanna administer two milligrams, I'm gonna be administering less than one milliliter, okay? And so I did the math here, simple. I do um, doctor's order over what I have on hand times the quantity. So that will give me two milligrams because that's what my doctor ordered over 10 milligrams because I have a 10 milligram vial per one ml times one. So two divided by 10 times one is gonna give me 0.2 milliliters. So in order to administer two milligrams of morphine using this vial specifically, I'm gonna administer 0.2 milliliters using the concentration in this vial. I should mention this is not real morphine. It is simulated morphine. It's actually just distilled water. See, I would do um, all of my um, checks and check against the MAR and look for my expiration date. Um, and everything looks good, okay? The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is go ahead and gather my supplies. Okay, so you won't be able to see me, but hopefully you'll be able to see my hands well enough so that you can see what I'm doing, okay? So obviously the first thing that I always do is I'm gonna perform my hand hygiene, okay? And I wanna make sure that I perform my hand hygiene even while just gathering my supplies. So I'm currently in my med room and I'm gathering my morphine out of the Pixis. And again, I'm looking and it's 10 milligrams per milliliter and I wanna administer 0.2 milliliters based on the fact that I'm administering two milligrams. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my one milliliter syringe, okay? And I'm going to grab a one and a half inch needle because Jason has a pretty large deltoid and I wanna make sure that I um, make sure that the medication is in the deltoid muscle, okay? So I have my one milliliter syringe. I have my one and a half inch needle, which also happens to be 22 gauge. I didn't go for the 21 gauge. And I have my alcohol. And you may also wanna bring a gauze 
or a band-aid um, with you. Typically in the hospital, we use a gauze. And because I need to withdraw this medication, and we like to withdraw the medication with a different needle than you're going to administer because many of the medications that we administer to our patients can be irritating to the surrounding tissue. And we do not want to irritate the surrounding tissue. So, um, you know, it's nice to use a blunt needle to withdraw the medicine. So again, I have my syringe. I have my blunt needle to withdraw. I have the actual IM needle and I have alcohol and I may have a gauze pad as well. All right, so let's go ahead and withdraw this medication. So actually, why don't we go ahead and do it in the room? So I'm gonna go and knock on my patient's door. Um, hi, I'm Erica, um, I'm your nurse taking care of you today. Can you please verify your name and date of birth? Okay, um, so I just verified against my patient's identification band as well as what they're telling me and with my medication administration record. So I'm home. I don't have all of those things available, but if you were in the clinical site, you would. So um, I, of course, before I even touch my patient, I'm going to hand sanitize. I would have done that before I went into the room and I kind of just did, but just want to make sure I know you guys are watching me and making sure I'm doing the right thing. So I hand sanitize, and because I'm gonna be giving an intramuscular injection, I know that there is a possibility of coming in contact with blood that I can put on gloves. The CD said, um, CDC says that you can administer um, without gloves, believe it or not. And I have seen nurses administer intramuscular injections without gloves, but in the hospital, we typically um, will use um, gloves when administering IM injections, okay? Or any type of injections. All right, so why don't, this will be my muscle for today, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean this vial. Okay, so I'm gonna clean it for 15 seconds vigorously, making sure to clean right in the center, which is where my needle will be going in. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach my syringe and needle. Now, there's a big pet peeve that I have that it's not a good practice. Oftentimes, I see my students put their syringes and their needles on their their computer station or the table. It's just not a good habit to have. I just currently expose this syringe to whatever microbials are on the table, okay? So when you take your syringe out, you do so by just pulling this apart. You're gonna go ahead and open your needle. Let's see if I've given you a good... So open your needle and you notice that the lure lock is on the side that you basically opened, okay? So you don't have to turn anything out. You don't even have to take it out. This is a needleless system. Needleless systems were created because of the fact that nurses and healthcare workers were getting um, stuck with needles all the time. Um, still a problem. So we wanna make sure that we use proper needle safety, okay? And so, so I have my blunt needle on my one milliliter syringe and I've already cleaned my vial and allowed it to dry. Appropriate amount, 0.2 mLs. You always wanna look at eye level. And so now I don't, I no longer need this needle. So I'm gonna take this needle and put it into my sharps container, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and attach the needle that I wanna use. Notice I'm not putting my syringe down. I don't wanna contaminate it. So I'm gonna open up. And I remember I chose a 22 gauge, one and a half inch needle. And so now I have my needle ready and I have my alcohol. Now, when we talk about intramuscular injections, you have to consider the type of medication that you're administering because some of the medication can be irritating to the skin, the surrounding tissue. For example, iron is very irritating, so we use the z track method. Now, it is recommended that um, you use the z track method 
um, more often now. It used to be just with iron that we were told, okay, use the Z-Track method. But now, depending on the patient and the muscle mass and the medication, you would want to use um, the Z-Track method. And all that means is that, obviously, once I clean the skin, I'm going to push the, um, the skin one inch to the side to basically move that tissue in a Z-like manner so that my needle goes directly into my muscle and prevents the um, medication from leaking into the skin, okay? Or excuse me, into the tissue, like the subcutaneous tissue, okay? Depending on the muscle size, you might need to pinch to get the muscle um, exposed or it most commonly, you're gonna be holding the skin taut. So there's a couple of ways that you could administer their IM injection in terms of where you're gonna place your hands. You can use the Z-Track method, which we just said, we're gonna use the um, our last three fingers to displace the skin over one inch, and that is to prevent the medication from irritating the, the tissue. We could use um, pinching if we have a smaller muscle that we want to make sure that we are reaching or most commonly you're going to be holding the skin um, taut. So let's go ahead and clean our deltoid here. So I'm going to clean by going to where my insertion point is in a circular motion, okay, moving outward. And once I go out, I'm not going to go back in into that insertion. Okay, so I cleaned my site. I allowed it to air dry. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, pull the cap off. And in this case, I'm going to hold the skin taut. I'm going to go in at a 90 degree angle because I want to make sure that I get into that muscle. And I'm going to use a dart like motion. So notice the way I'm holding the syringe like a dart. I'm not holding the syringe um, the, by the plunger. Okay, I'm holding it. Um, over here because if you hold it by the plunger you might accidentally push the medication when it's too soon so I'm holding it um, by the actual um, syringe and I'm holding the skin taut okay I want you to imagine these three fingers holding that surrounding tissue and keeping the skin taut so that I can administer this correctly at a 90 degree angle I'm going to go ahead and dart this into my patient and then I'm going to use my index finger and my thumb to stabilize my syringe while I'm still holding the skin taut. I'm going to go ahead and move my hand up to the plunger, instill the medication over two seconds because it's 10 seconds per ml. I have 0.2 mls. And then I'm going to wait about 10 seconds to make sure all of that medicine is in the muscle and not dripping from my needle. I'm going to pull my two fingers away, still holding the skin taut. Pull the syringe out at the same direction that I entered it. And then with a one hand approach, I'm going to go ahead and activate my safety and insert the syringe and needle into the shark's container. And then I can go ahead and grab a gauze and place on the patient and home, hold firm pressure if it's bleeding or put a band-aid on it, okay? The big thing I wanna stress here is that I'm not gonna bring my hand over to activate this safety, that's very dangerous. So you wanna go ahead and just use your thumb or a lot of nurses will use the guardrail to activate the safety. The biggest thing is you don't wanna bring that other hand over and obviously you never wanna recap a needle that you just used, okay? And then it goes right into the sharps container and you document. Um, the site that you chose and obviously you'll come back and reassess your patient for um, pain relief. All right, I hope this is helpful. Okay, so that's how you administer an IM injection. I hope this was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment box and I'll be happy to help in any way that I can. Um, my resource, I should mention that my resource for today is the Taylor's Clinical Nursing Skills textbook. Um, you should be using the skills textbook that your school recommends, but if you um, need a skills textbook, this is a pretty good one. It does go step by step and explains in further detail how to administer an IM injection. So there'll be a link down below for you. Um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful and have a great day. Bye. One, two, three, come on.